We're back for Caravan of Garbage. Last week, we looked at something judged dreadful. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. James is going to turn it around in the next sentence. He's got a pun play on words for dread that means good, right? Yeah, I do. Here we go. This week, we're looking at a better movie. <laughs> Leave a like. <laughs> Leave a like. We're, of course, talking about Dread 2012 or Dread 3D, as it was known when it came out. Was it? That mustn't have helped. It was on all the posters. It's in like a lot of the official titling. Huh. The idea that it was in 3D <laughs> is not what it kill, what killed it. It's that it's an R-rated action movie based on a comic book premise that nobody yeah. has any idea about. Marketed weirdly. Yeah. Bad faith from the last one. People thought it was a sequel to the last one. The yeah. people that knew about it at all. I mean, the Avengers had just come out, I think. Yeah. So there was still a comic book movie stigma attached of like, I don't know. I think Avengers was a fluke. Kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. I mean, off the back of, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy and the Avengers, a property like this this like lesser known ish it is it is a risk you know what i mean yeah. i feel like if this had have come out now it probably would have made more than the 41 million dollars it did make off its 45 million dollar budget oh dear tragic yeah i figured out why this movie is so good though okay i'm ready it has a screenplay by we'll alex garland and you might be like alex garland from ex machina and annihilation and the guy who wrote sunshine and i say yes the very same that's right and apparently carl urban has mentioned He's the one who actually directed this movie. Like the actual oh. director, director, you know, he was involved to some uh -huh. extent, but this is really considered Alex Garland's first directorial effort. That's very interesting. Is that scandalous? <laughs> How does a writer direct a film? Are they like, more description, <laughs> say more description. These words, say these words the way I've written them. Or maybe put your own spin on it. That's directing, right? I'm not a director. I am the director. <laughs> No, your place. You're not the director anymore. I'm the director. I'm Alex Garland, I'm the director. So I think that's why this works so well. What else is fascinating about this is it's it's a bottle episode. You yeah, know what I mean? It really is, yeah. It's not end of the world, stakes are high. It's like drugs and we'll just stop these drugs. Is that to cut costs? Yes. Oh. There's a lot of cost cutting things. Well, I mean, that's the, 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 the question here is, does this really feel like dread, mm. Judge Dread, like the comic book Judge Dread? And I guess the second question uh, is does this need to be a Judge Dread movie? Well, yeah. And look, aesthetically, it doesn't really feel that much like Judge Dread. No. Like, it's certainly been pared down. It's not like, you know, weird Gianni Versace glam of the last movie. <laughs> big heels, big boots. Right? A big codpiece. Yes. It's not the, you know, super outlandish mega cities of, you know, just The mayhem. comics and that one street they built in that yes, last Yes, exactly. One, yeah. You know, the mayhem and madness and everybody is some sort of bizarre neon clown. Yeah, you know, on the street, it's more like an uh, an exaggeration of just just modern day. Yes, the, the modern day slums of the world, yeah. except expanded out to cover eight hundred million people. And I'm, I think it might be the downfall of this movie a little bit, I guess. But at the same time, I really like that aesthetic because they filmed in like Johannesburg and Cape Town. They filmed a bunch of regular streets because it was apparently very grid-like, the areas they filmed in. And then they throw in the big towers with CGI, yeah. a few highways and some cars and here and there. But it's all very much real locations. You know, that really speaks to the look of this movie. But beyond that, if you look at Judge Dredd himself, they built him like a riot cop. Yes. You know, and intentionally. Yeah, you know, yeah. If you look at, he doesn't have like the crazy shoulder pads, you know what I mean? And the big the big gold chain and the eagle and all that I kind mean, of thing. I mean, there's an eagle, but it's not a, you know. Yeah. But even like, like the badge is probably the most outlandish thing on it. Uh -huh, I yeah. I guess. But to answer the other question, uh, could you make this movie without Judge Dredd? You could... But, but no I, one would see it more. No one, or even less. more, or less. I, I don't know. But that's the thing. Like, I think this is a more subtle take on dread. Yeah. You know, a great example would be how each particular actor says or screams, "I am the law." I am the law. I am the law. Yeah, sure. But this particular Judge Dredd, he more encompasses the spirit of Judge Dredd, I think. Yeah. Because in this, he's he's less of a man and he's more of a uh, a vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? When, yeah. when we first see him, you, like we, we just see him from like a distance mm -hmm. and like we, we often see him from like, from the perspective of his hand drawing his gun out of his holster. Yep. There's a lot of shots of him. It's just his mouth. Mm -hmm. You don't see, like it's just. I mean, if you can't focus on the eyes, what else you got? Well, you know exactly what I mean? right. Yeah. yeah. We, we get two perspectives in this movie. We get rookie Judge Anderson Mm. who at one point we see look out into the mega city from the peach tree tower block. They've just come out of a firefight. She's wrecked and ruined by this. And she looks out in the cities and she realizes that everything is like, that the whole city is like this and the whole city is this awful nightmare. Yeah. But for Judge Dredd, from his perspective, this is literally just any other day. Yeah, exactly. Like if you watch it from the perspective of like, 
he does this every single day. Like every move he makes yeah. is just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this tomorrow and I'm totally fine with that. To the point where the tower is like locked down mm. and dangerous gangs are out to destroy them. He's still like... Okay, Anderson, you're the rookie. Make a play. <laughs> yeah, that's you, right. Exactly. Still being, this is not This is still a training exercise. He's still in it. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's never a moment of panic. There's never really a moment of compromise. But I guess there is kind of more towards the end. But what I think also uh, distinguishes him from the Stallone dread is, is he's not the worst person. He's in the not world. the worst. He's fair. Like he'll stun a kid even if the kid is gonna shoot him. Yeah. There's a little bit of leeway in him. He's fair and it feels earned. Like yeah, his fairness. A, well, exactly, and that's hard to do even if you're not aware of the character of Judge Dredd. Mm. But in the you know in the first one in the 1995 version, that version. And it's, it's hard to do because, again, Judge Dredd is supposed to be an iconic character and also a caricature. Mm. So how do you play that? And Stallone went with just an unbelievably unlikable character who will not bend for any extenuating circumstances whatsoever. And when that character, you know, falls afoul of the justice system, you don't care. And like, he can't you, comprehend it either. Because right. he's like, I don't, what do you mean? Yeah. Everything's black and white. And this right, guy's right. like... This grey area in this. Exactly, that, right. As they approach the peach trees, like there's a, like a homeless guy and he's like, mm. move along. Yeah. Or he could have given him, you know, weeks in the ISO cubes kind of thing. But also, that moment really speaks to the character because when he comes back, even though he's got a million better things to do, he's like, I told you, you're coming in. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? He's just, he's that kind of guy. He's like, I'm fair, but fuck you. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. the, that's the kind of attitude I get from this guy. I've got a question about him, though. Yes. I don't think he's famous the way that the comic book version or the Stallone one is. Yeah. I think he's famous among other cops, mm -hmm. but most of the other people in the real world, they just think he's another judge. I think that's true as well, and I think it's never, I don't think, outwardly stated, but I think this is meant to be quite early on yes. in the career of Judge Dredd, because, again, in this, Judge Anderson is, like, the first judge cadet who exhibits any kind of psychic powers, but in the comic books, the side judges are quite commonplace. Like, there's yeah. a whole division of them to, you know, use their powers to fight crime, whereas she seems to be the first. So I think you're right. I think this is meant to be early days. And, mm. yeah, he's, he isn't a legend amongst the world. He's just known amongst other cops as kind of... For being a bit of a prick. Yeah. And you get that sense from when he comes up against some crooked judges. But there's never bad guys that are like, oh, shit, it's dread, right? you know? Uh -huh. They're just like... It's just another cop we got to shoot. Exactly. We, the audience, learn to respect him because of his actions, not because of like a legendary aura that's been dropped on us by the director. Yeah, yeah? exactly. So I think about this movie as well is it's like it's grim and it's bloody and it's awful, but it's also, it's a beautiful looking movie. It really is. I yeah. mean, outside of the slow-mo stuff, but also the slow-mo stuff. They filmed that at something like 4,000 frames per second. Don't quote me on that. It's probably a different amount of <laughs> frameage, but... Even the one frame per second, James, <laughs> you were way off. <laughs> but even, you know, watching somebody get shot through the face. Yeah. It's balletic and it's beautiful and it's colourful and it's vibrant. And a lot of that was done practically where they'd shoot someone with like an air cannon and get the ripples of their body. Oh, wow. And then they'd add like the CGI blood splatter or that they'd film in front of a green screen. And I think it really, it makes you go, it's bloody, but it's not turn away, like wincing, you know, bones piercing skin yeah. and stuff like that. You yeah. say that, but several men are skinned alive. Yeah, there, I mean, th though there are exceptions. In real time, though, <laughs> yes. yeah. Uh -huh. But you know, do you know what I mean? Like even Absolutely, yeah. the death of Ma at the end, when she hits the ground, you don't really see her like face split apart. It's just this beautiful display of like yeah. blood that kind of- You wanna talk about Mama? I do, yeah. Lena Headey, who's normally like, uh, what I like about this is she's committed to being like a femme fatale, but not yep. in that classic way of like beautiful, but you know, with the, with the deep dark secrets. And she's she's mm, using her feminine ways to, to reach the top <laughs> of the food chain. No, she's just she's killing people all the way up, chopping people to bits <laughs> to the, reach the top of the food chain. Yeah, mm. like she's committed to the scars and the hair and the teeth. And I'd imagine that's something if she wanted to, she could fix. Yeah, but it's like no, this is very much who I and am. And yeah. we don't get a huge amount of screen time with the character, but it, you know, we do get enough of her origin to, to be like. Oh, I get yeah. how she she ended up here, kind of. Oh, thing. she dug out Domhnall Gleeson's eyes. That's not cool, you say. Not cool at all, but I understand. She's had it pretty rough. I think also the reason that you were like, was this in 3D or whatever, is because it's not it's not filmed in the way that a terrible 3D movie is filmed. 
Sure. They used all the riggings and all that kind of thing to, you know, so they don't have to post convert it. But there's nothing like, look out, Dread, there's a bullet flying <laughs> towards you and and the audience as well. Look out. Anderson, the only way you're gonna be able to defeat these guys Stop is with a ping time. pong paddle with a ball and exactly. string on it. <laughs> tap it a tap it a tap it a tap. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it was probably a waste of time. And I didn't mm. see this in the cinemas because I was teaching up north at the time. Did you see this in the cinemas? No, I was against movies at the time. Wow. What Just, were you doing? No, I'm probably books. Pro- yeah, yeah, books. <laughs> yeah, books. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like if there was a sequel to this, which we will talk about, mm. you kind of need to go mutants and more telekinesis and weirder weapons. Yeah. And well, I guess, you know, we, we can build up to that. Again, if this is early days and, and yeah. radiation is just causing some psychic abilities in some people, but as uh, the dialogue maybe suggests, most people are getting horrible mutations. We will see that yeah. later on, but yeah. But there's something that I know people want want to know about, about you and what you think. Oh, Mason. Says mini gun minutes. Correct. We do it every week. That's right. We do it everything from Aladdin to Zoolander. That's right. <laughs> You've got stipulation for mini guns, though. Do you want to? Do you want to lay them out? Okay. Well, the mini gun mm. traditionally, uh, it has to a be very mini at all. They're not mini at all. They're mini. It's a miniature version of the kind they they hang on uh, uh, fighter planes. That's why it's called a mini gun. It's kind of a joke, but uh, they're they're not meant to be man portable. But in a lot of instances, they are. Like the classic one, Terminator Two Judgment Day. Correct. Uh, here's the thing. They have to have six barrels. Mm-hmm. Heavy machine gun, that's not a mini gun. It's not how eight barrels, it's not even a real thing. Are you kidding me? Whatever the movie that is in, you what do you stop? And three, it has to be a real one. Yeah. And these ones I think fall down a little bit because they look like they're CGI. But Yes. I mean they are. Yes. yes. But they are cutting through people. Oh like, my god, the it, action is spectacular. It fits. We haven't really even covered it. I mean, no. we're talking about the slow-mo stuff, but the action in this movie is spect that scene particularly, just just incredibly brutal. And speaking of Mama, just the idea of like she just cut through a level of people. She, she doesn't, doesn't care. Know. No. Yeah, exactly. You can see the glint. To kill one guy. Yeah, you can yeah. see the glint of the muzzle flash in her eyes at one point, and I'm yeah. like, oof. She's loving it, mate. She's, lo- she's absolutely loving it. Yeah. See, I, I would give it a pass if it was James's minigun minute. It's not. I just want to clarify that yeah, with everybody. Right. Yeah. Because it is this hyper-violent, stylized world. Mm. So I would have thought that maybe you would give it the same, but... It- no, it should have been real miniguns and Carl Urban should have been willing to cop at least three or four slugs. Sure. In order for this to, for it to get my seal of approval. Well, speaking of, uh, Dredd does get shot in this. And I got the sense through this movie that him and his comrade, they could die. Right. He's not uh-huh. just like running through and he's fine and like, you know, he shoots over his shoulder and like four guys fall down. Though that probably does happen in this movie. You feel like, Dredd, you need to be careful because there's a lot of danger going on here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. He feels like he, he could die at any minute and then that's just the end of the movie, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But they also, again, like you were saying, there's no shooting over the shoulder, but like they sort of behave like real cops. There's mm. a scene right at the end uh, where it's him and Anderson working their way up to Mama. They're working together. They're clearing the rooms yeah. together. It looks, looks incredible. It does look good. And there's like a couple of great action sequences early on. We get the slow-mo one, but we also get a sequence where they're fighting through like the stum gas cloud. It's all green and neon. Yeah. And there's another one where they fight, you know, through a flashbang explosion. And that gas, I don't know whether it is, but it looks real. Because often when you see gas in a movie, say like Batman v Superman, you can see that it's not quite... Oh. I mean, maybe it, maybe it isn't real, I don't know, but I got the sense that it, that it was. If you worked on the movie Dread, if you're the gas man, yeah. please write in, let us know. What I also thought was really incredible about the way they made this movie, there's a sparing use of CGI shots, you know, when they're going like up the centre of the complex. Mm-hmm. Like they obviously didn't build that whole thing. They built one corner of one level and then they just redressed it. So they didn't even do the whole side. So every time they did it, you know, they swap everything around and, and do it from a, you know, make it, it sounds like, like they angle. did take something out of uh, 1995's Judge <laughs> Dredd. Just that one street they kept moving around. Now, before I do uh, trivia, three treatment trivia, which we do every week. Yeah. You got any more things to add? Uh, just, it's a, it's a, it's a grand old time. Like yeah. it's, it's tough. I was going to say it's tough to be funny about this movie. It's tough to be funny at the best of times, James, you know it, us. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> sure. When a movie is just straight up enjoyable and there's no glaring production errors, yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, hard to make fun of it. But uh, when it's, uh, you know what? Not all of this is jokes, all right? Not all of it is jokes. I'll also say that this came out around the same time as The Raid. And there was a lot of people saying that this borrowed from The Raid, you know, because it's about storming up a building and whatever and crime lords and et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just doesn't line up time-wise, yeah, timeline-wise. Right. You know what I mean? It's... 
they they just they're two kind of independent ideas which kind of developed independently. So. Now I think this studio was like the raid, huh? Well, qu- quick, get a C-list uh, superhero uh, comic book license. Get it quick, and build what a building. What have we got? What have we got? Anyway, uh, so Alex Garland actually wrote uh, three treatments because this is three treatment trivia. We do this every week. Oh, we do it uh, from every movie from Aladdin two to Zoolander two. Mm. So these are some of the ideas he came up with. One was the Dark Judges treatment, which features an encounter between Dread and the rival judge by the name of Judge Death. Yes. What's he all about? Death. Probably his, his skull. Has he got a sculled face? Yeah, he's sometimes. got a pretty, pretty skully face. Yeah. Cool, good on him. Yeah. Uh, the second treatment is related to the Dread and Cursed Earth storyline. Oh, yeah. Which I think, did we talk about that last week? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, or maybe You, you don't have to go out of the Cursed Earth, all right? It's an mm, option. It's an option. You don't have to take it. Okay, fair enough. And the third one was an adaptation of the pro-democracy terrorist attacking the judges storyline. So there you go. But they went, all of these are too difficult to to kind of get in scope-wise and budgetary, so let's keep this bottle episode. Let's just get Dread getting some asthma inhalers. Garland, this is primo stuff, but how about think of a corridor? Think of a corridor. Think of think of a regular motorbike. <laughs> if you could. Carl Urban is really on that motorbike. Didn't take his helmet off the whole time. I should we should mention that. Um, it totally doesn't detract from this movie. No, how do you slightest. like it'd be in some great chin acting? I mean, when that's uh, all, when that's all you got. A lot of frowning, mm, you know, <laughs> like right. that sad blobfish. Mm, yeah, you know mm, what I mean. Mm, absolutely, yeah, great stuff. Really good. Hard to do, I'd imagine. Sure. So there's been talk of like, this, is this going to get a sequel? What else is going on in this universe? I can offer some updates here because I'd Please. love to see more of this. But whether or not that happens, we'll see, won't we? There is a prequel motion comic which you can watch on the YouTube. Okay. Uh, here's a clip of it. Here, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I know, it's like, right? just like being there. Uh, there's also a sequel comic called Dread Underbelly. I actually just read that before the start of this. It's very similar. There's like, there's a new drug on the street and it's even more dangerous than the previous drug. So I would have liked to have seen it kind of expand out more. It's called it, Fast Forward. That's right. <laughs> you take it and then it, you, it's like two hours later and you just, you're on your couch. And you're like, what? And you're 40 years older. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I missed all my favourite TV shows. <laughs> and I'm 40 years older. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did like it. It's a good mm. read and it's a beautiful looking book. Book. And it brings in a little bit of kind of the mutant element because there's a mutant refugee kind of storyline going on with it. But part of me was like, this is a comic. You can do literally anything. Right. Like, you don't uh-huh. want to bring in something <laughs> Have else. Have you read some of the other Judge Dread comics? Yeah. Of course they do a lot of weird stuff. That being said, it's cool. And the other thing is, there's a Mega City 1 series which is happening. It's it's not not happening. They haven't said it's oh, not great. happening. Oh, terrific. Uh-huh. Yeah, so... Here's the deal. I know that the the guys who have the rights to it, Rebellion, are currently working on developing a TV show called Mega City One. I have no doubt that will happen at some point in the future, whether or not I'll be a part of it. I don't know. I'm sort of committed to doing the boys. But why would they? Why would they say it's not happening? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Carl Urban says he would definitely take the role. Of course he would. Yeah. Well, here's the Carl, thing. Carl Urban said, nah, not for me. <laughs> This critically loved uh, fan favourite. No, I wouldn't do it again <laughs> for money and acclaim. <laughs> nope. So according to Carl Urban himself, uh, the concept is to build this show around more rookie judges and the new younger judges where Dredd himself would come in and out. So he stated that he would be interested in reprising his role for this show on the condition that Dredd's part be implemented in a meaningful way. Interesting. Kind of like Limitless, the series probably. And he could do that from home. You know how? Full green body stocking, except for the mouth. <laughs> except for the and mouth. And then he films it in his house. He'd make like the shower or something. Great. Also, great callback in this movie. You know, when, right at the start of the movie, he's like, are you ready? And he's like, you don't look ready. And at the end, do you remember the end? And he's like, are you ready? And she's like, yes. And he's like, yeah, you, yeah, look, you look ready. ready. You look great. That was, that was, that was sick. That was that sick, was bro. sick, wasn't it? Right, yeah. If you haven't seen Dread, and even if you've watched this... I don't think it's going to detract from it. It's an absolute banger. This is my go-to if I'm editing and I just want something on in the background. Because it's, it's just, it's, it's a just, beautiful looking movie. Just, it's a beautiful looking movie. Great action. You char- get it. Characters you can get. Uh, Olivia Thirlby, who played uh, Judge Anderson, met her husband on the set. Really? Yeah. So it's worked out for she everybody. She should be in more things. Except for the money people. It didn't work out for no. the money people at all. We feel bad for you, but... I do think, though, a series could definitely work from this now. I think there's maybe lower stakes in terms of monetary requirements. You know, you can build up characters over a series of episodes. You can get a cult following. You know, you can do it week to week. So people, you know, it gains that kind of buzz. You know what I mean? Netflix will give you money for anything. Just give you money. They don't give a shit. They don't right. care. They're heavily in debt and they're giving everybody Millions money. Millions of dollars. <laughs> it's astounding. How are they going to make that back? Judge what? Dredd series? Probably not. It doesn't seem likely. No. Yeah, but definitely check it out if you haven't. But if you're like... 
But what's next week, James? We've talked about the Dread movies. Have you run out of things for caravans of garbages? Yes. Yeah, we have. <laughs> no, Mason, there's always things to talk about, good or bad, because that's what this show is now. It's just whatever. Mostly bad, though, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> yeah. So here's a hint towards next week. Why are you here? Oh, my God, that's a Star Wars thing. It's a Star Wars thing, Mason, for The Mandalorian, so come back for that if you want. But if you'd like to see it early, you can actually go to bigsandwich.co. They all go up early all the time, along with the extended audio edition of these. Plus, we have other stuff on there. We've got bonus podcasts. We've got movie commentaries. There's so many things going on, isn't there? Too right. many great contents. So check it out if you want. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday morning. If you want to swing by and check out the news of what's happening in entertainment hot goss. That's right. Or just like, hey, they announced the show. You know, that's we do a lot of that. That's true, yeah. And then we track it for three years before it gets cancelled. <laughs> that's right. It's really exciting. All right, guys, see you next week. Uh, grab that dread, everyone. Whoa! I'll buy his cod piece. <laughs> Is this no, guy got a cod that. piece? No, he's just, just pants, I think. He wouldn't even need one, would he? What does that mean? He's just that kind of guy. Bulletproof penis. He's free balling it. Oh, my God, wow. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. Bye.